website uh, or web page and copy everything that's there. And then you go into SPSS and you go into File and you click New and you go Syntax and it opens up syntax window and you want a fresh one that doesn't have anything in it and then you just paste all that information now the way the macro setup is that there's a com element to it that has a random data generation and uh, this is just sample data to test the macro on and you should delete this there's no po I don't really see any point in doing that we have data I've got data I want to test it and I don't want to have that data so you can just delete that section that I just deleted now now the next step is to actually run the macro so that the uh, the new function BPK test over here this, that's going to be a syntax function that function doesn't exist yet in SPSS you have to run the macro in order to add it to the syntax library and to do that you highlight the define you highlight the macro that starts at the word define and then ends at the word end define and you run that just once. Okay, run selection. And then go back to the syntax. You only have to run it once as long as your SPSS uh, application is open. But as soon as you close SPSS, uh, the next time you start it up, you'll have to run this macro again if you want to test, uh, if you want to use the BPK test. Now, what's here is it says uh, x1 is a dependent variable and x2 to x20 are the predictors so in my case I need to replace this with AFI now this number 19 uh, is in reference to the number of uh, predictor variables and I can tell you that in my model in my stepwise multiple regression analysis which I've done previously in another video and I actually done it very quickly here uh, there are five predictor variables Okay, and now I'm going to add them, and from memory they're DJW, ARG, and I'm going to have to look at the output to find, to see which ones they are exactly. So DJW, ARG, these are the, these are the uh, independent variables in my multiple regression model, AMHDUI, AMHDUI, and what's the last one, CIN, CIN. So now that I've specified my dependent variable, the number of independent variables, and then I've added them here, so one, two, three, four, five, I just have to run that small section of syntax to run the macro with my data. Okay, so what this macro does is it tests it it produces some extra multiple regression output that isn't really relevant given that I've already run the regression. But uh, the first section is producing the regression SS and the residual SS, sums of squares, total sums of squares, R squared, not especially relevant. But what is relevant is that it uses that information to calculate the, uh, the Broisha-Pagan test. And I can see that my chi it's a chi-square, uh, it's a chi-square value, or it follows the chi-square distribution excuse me and it's a 13.17 and the significance is 0 0.02 so because that's less than 0 0.05 I am rejecting the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity so my suspicion that there was heteroscedasticity in these data uh, seems to hold because I've rejected the null hypothesis because this p-value is less than 0 0.05 that's based on the broisha pagan test now there's also the Coanker test of heteroscedasticity, and this also follows the chi-square distribution. Now, Coanker apparently is more appropriate or more rigorous uh, with small sample sizes, and when the residuals uh, associated with the uh, the distribution of residuals associated with the dependent variable uh, looks like it might be non-normal, and mine looks like it's not perfectly normal; it's a bit non-normalish. Uh, so I might emphasize, and my sample size is definitely small at 89. That's not a very big sample size for a multiple regression. Uh, so I would probably apply the co use the Coanker test, uh, which has a chi-square of 18.02. And uh, the level of significance is also less than 0 0.05 at 0 0.0029. So again, I'd reject the null hypothesis. Same conclusion. So I was able to test my suspicion, uh, or test the assumption of homoscedasticity statistically this using this uh, macro in SPSS. 
Uh, I suppose something that's interesting, I'm going to add a little bit here at the end of this video, that um, a lot of people test homoscedasticity.